Never use a verb other than said to carry dialogue. I love this one. We do have to talk about dialogue here. Not all short stories have to de- have to have dialogue, but especially if you're writing a longer novel, which I know some of you want to uh, want to try, and by all means do, you got to be really careful with dialogue here. And also the thing about dialogue tags is that we typically skip the he said, she said. It's just there to remind us, oh, it's so-and-so saying, okay? Because how on earth can you really convey he admonished gravelly in writing? It's really hard to do that, you know? And it, it does more telling than showing. So um, has anyone read the original Sherlock Holmes stories by um, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle? They're some of my favorite stories, um, but I will fault Sir Arthur Conan Doyle for this. That man hated the word said. He hated the word said. It was never, you know my methods, dear Watson, Sherlock said. No, 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 no. So in many of the Sherlock Holmes short stories, the amount of times I read Watson ejaculated was hilarious. Now that word carries a different meaning today. I don't need to say it. But back then, ejaculated was the same as like, (gasps) By Jove! By Jove, Watson ejaculated. Oh my God. It was hilarious, okay? So sometimes said is the best. Please just say said. It's okay to sometimes say he replied, he he lied, or whatever. It's okay to say that every once in a while, but please, you got to be really careful with that. Here's kind of the truth about dialogue here. I want you guys to forget this idea of natural dialogue. Forget that buzzword. Forget that buzzword of realistic dialogue. Here's the truth. Dialogue in stories, dialogue in movies and fiction, they're not realistic at all. If we actually wrote down the way we speak, it would be so awkward. You know why? Because we don't talk a lot in day-to-day life. We spend most of our times silently by ourselves in front of our computers or whatever. OK, we we don't really spend a lot of talking, but in movies and especially in short stories, my God, everyone's a chatterbox. Everyone's uh, theorizing philosophically about something for whole paragraphs. That's not realistic. OK, it's it's not. We don't do that all the time. OK, some people do, but it's very few. So forget realistic dialogue, forget natural dialogue. OK, the thing I want to push about dialogue is dialogue has to be true to your story. Here's what I mean, okay? If your story takes place in 1800s England, no one's going to say, yeah, bet, bay, okay? You see what I mean? Like, that's a very common, easy one to understand. If it's a time period piece, they have to talk as if they did back then, and you have to do a little bit of research. But let's say you're writing contemporary, contemporary here, true to your story. If you're telling a story about someone who is closeted, someone who is someone who keeps to themselves, they wouldn't be a chatterbox. They wouldn't. And if they did speak, they would speak in short, terse little statements. Yeah, sure. Thanks. No, thank you. Short and terse. Okay. So your dialogue has to be true to your story. Now, if you're intentionally writing um, a piece that is satire, Uh, If you're writing a a humor short story where the goal is clearly to make people laugh, okay, you can have all the funny little Marvel-like quips that you want, okay? All that fast-talking, you know, quips, you can have that as many times as you want because in real life, we're not that smart. (laughs) That's what I don't, that's why I can't stand about some movies, how every character has a perfectly timed punchline. Okay, in real life, we don't have that. Okay, the second one is that dialogue has to move the story. Now, in a bit, I'm going to talk about structure and how your story is supposed to move. But dialogue is only there to help move your story. Keep it brief and avoid small talk. Small talk doesn't have a lot to do with with story. Some people complain about this. You ever watch in movies or you ever watch or have you ever read in short stories? When someone gets a phone call, they don't say hi, hello. And then when they hang up, they don't say bye bye or goodbye. The reason why is because that's dead weight. In a movie, in a movie, you only got like a couple hours to keep people's attention span, you know, a couple minutes, if even. So that's why they cut that stuff out. People go, man, 
why are characters in movies so rude? They don't say hi or hello when they pick up the phone. Yeah, like there's a reason why. We gotta <laughs> we gotta hurry up here, okay? So um, any dialogue that does not move your story needs to be cut immediately. Any dialogue that info dumps. Oh God, this needs to be deleted immediately. This is also called exposition. Exposition is clearly when you read a piece of dialogue that is there just to explain the story. It's just there to explain it. If you ever find yourself writing as you know, I want you to delete that immediately. Why would you, why would you ever tell someone as you know? They already know it. Char um, your dialogue has to move the character. Everything that the character says has to be meaningful here. That's why you're cutting small talk. Give your characters a unique way of speaking. If you have five characters in your novel and they all speak the exact same way, people will cry foul. It's like, you cannot tell me that five people speak the exact same way. No. Some people use long words. Some people use short words. Some love to speak very eloquently. Some talk fast. Some talk <laughs> slow. Some have regional dialects or whatever. Make every character have a unique way of speaking because once again, the dialogue is only there to move this character, move the story, and the dialogue has to be true to whatever story you're trying to tell.